The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to change the modem today. And I just want to remind you that we lost two of the grand ladies of astrology these past two weeks. Jeannie Long of the Galactic Fibonacci Trader down in St. Augusta, Florida. And then also Dr. Ruth Miller in Indianapolis, Indiana, who was uh, my mentor. I've just posted her picture uh, when she was uh, 94. She traded up until she was 95. Then she lost her hearing and then she uh, caught Alzheimer's and she passed away on uh, January the 8th. I spoke to her uh, granddaughter last night and I told her I was going to do a little tribute to her because uh, I'm not going to write an autobi autobiography. I was thinking of one, one time, but now I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I'll give you a little rerun of how I got to do this. Uh, the Miller family, it was the Turner family. She was married to John Turner. She married Bob Miller after John had passed away. But they owned a farm in Farmersburg, Indiana, just south, about eight, eight to ten miles south of Terre Haute. And she taught at uh, economics at uh, Indiana State University. She had a doctor in economics. Um, I knew John and Terry, his son, her son, uh, during the days when I was uh, trading beans back in the you know 60s and 70s at, at uh, 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 Conti Commodities, and so I got to know them very well. I didn't know her hardly at all, but the reason why the the family connection is because on the way home from from Indiana State, you take Highway 41 South, and that's where the family restaurant, Louise's restaurant, was. It was the best restaurant in Terre Haute, and so they ate there all the time, and my mother happened to be a waitress there, and she waited on them all those years, and so she knew the family. And uh, my aunt, who was very, very close to her, who also passed away uh, from Alzheimer's, uh, and she was always there. And then what happened was I had traded uh, for many years. Let's forget about the trading part. But in 80, uh, in 80, 85, I had left a commodity corporation and the Merck, and I was working in uh, uh, Avila Beach, which is a suburb of uh, San Luis Obispo, right on the water there. I was living there on the beach with my good friend John Raffoni, and what I was doing was uh, expert witnessing. And I, I did about 30 cases over the two years. It was a lot of fun. It was totally different. Made some good money and it gave me a break from trading which I needed badly after going uh, through a divorce and so what I was doing uh, one day I got a, a little a card in the mail from my aunt and it was a note from Ruth Miller and she said Ruth asked me to give you this and so I looked at the note and she said the note and she said you know I forget it was uh, I think it was November beans or, no it was uh, it was August beans she said August beans will go off the board at about um, 685 or whatever the price was. I wish I'd have kept the note. I didn't. And anyway, I kept that note. I, I was keeping my charts up to date, but I wasn't doing anything. And then, by golly, I looked and there, they went within one penny of the exact price that uh, she said they were going to go off. And she gave me this six weeks earlier. And uh, she put a note on there. She says, call me. So I called her, and she was still in Terre Haute. And I said, uh, what she actually was living in Martinsville because John had passed away and she married Bob Miller, who was another big farmer over in Illinois in Martinsville. And uh, she said, Why don't you come down to uh, uh, Florida and uh, I'll show you? Because what I'm looking at are these Fibonacci numbers that you like, but they're related to the cycles. And she said, I think you'll find it very interesting. She said, We'll send you a ticket. You come down to Sarasota and spend some time with us. So I said, well, how long do you think it'll take? She said, it'll take a couple of weeks, I would imagine. So I got there right around uh, uh, Halloween, and I stayed uh, until, uh, <laughs> I think it was December the 15th. So we, I was there about six weeks, and we worked, I'm not kidding you, folks, we worked 18 to 20 hours a day, seven days a week. It was so exciting. Um, Bob, her husband, got very angry with us a couple times because we would be up at 2, 3 in the morning and just find something and just, you know, be really excited about it. And he said, I just don't understand how two people can get so excited about numbers. And I said, well, it's, you know, it's, 
it's fun for us. And so uh, we did that. What, what we were doing was we had the dates of when these commodities changed. And then uh, Ruth, uh, Neil Michelson from Astro Computing on San Diego, he had all of the dates of the Astro aspects. Twentyman had all the dates of the, of the commodity things. And so we would ask the computer, you know, what happened on these dates? And then we would go back and check to see if there was anything astrological there. And we started to see some really good, really good hits, especially the Venus Uranus. Hold on just a minute here. I might be preempted here for something. Uh, okay, we've got a caller from uh, Wesley, Pennsylvania. Tony, what can I do for you, my friend? Hi, hi, Larry. You've got a wonderful show. I listen every day, but I couldn't listen yesterday. I was wondering, is Stan Holly bullish or bearish on the S&P market? Uh, he's bullish. Uh, he thinks it's going to go higher. He's bullish bonds. Uh, and he doesn't have an opinion on gold other than, you know, it might go into a trading range. But it was basically, he was still bullish on the S&P, said there could be a pullback, but he, he's looking for higher prices uh, uh, in this year. Okay, but does he think there may be a short-term pullback? Yeah, he's well. Of course, they're, yeah. He said they're, he said it's overbought, but he he wasn't predicting one. He was just saying that longer term that he thought prices were going to go higher. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Larry. You got a wonderful show. I listen every day. Thank you very much, Tony. I really appreciate it. Bye bye. You bet. Okay, back to the, uh, the uh, we were talking about uh, Neil Michelson and matching those up. Well, the one that really popped out, of course, we did the full moons and new moons, and they looked great. And we had the Bradley model, and, uh, you know, we had prices going back to 1875. And so we looked at the Bradley model and uh, looked at, you know, how well it worked at times. And it, it was really, you know, quite exciting. And then we saw the ones where Venus was conjunct uh, the sun and Mercury was conjunct the sun. That was combust. And we started to match these numbers up with, uh, you know, the synodic periods, and we started to see a lot of, you know, really good uh, hits and everything, and it looked like, you know, we had found, uh, you know, the Holy Grail, but of course we knew we hadn't, and so uh, we basically uh, did this, and we, we did it for six weeks, and we had reams of paper, and uh, when I flew back, I had, oh my gosh, I think I had three large boxes of uh, more, yeah, about three large boxes of research stuff, and I took it back, and I, I was living in an apartment now in uh, Shell Beach, California. I had I got my own nice little apartment overlooking the water there, and so I this was before we moved up the hill a couple years later at the big house up in Pismo, but uh, I had uh, put everything on the floor, and I, I categorized it into uh, stacks of what we were doing, and finally, I looked at it, and I said, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And uh, so I, I talked to Ruth, and she said, well, you got to do a book. And I said, heck, I don't know anything about writing a book. And uh, I really didn't. And so this was uh, this was just about uh, it's past Christmas. So it was around 27th or 28th of, um, of December. And uh, that coming up to a little break here, that works out pretty good, because right after that, I will show you uh, how I got started uh, uh, doing the book. And we'll see it. I hope you like this stuff, folks. I, I, it's a real tribute to this woman because she changed my life. My good friend and other mentor, John Hill, is 94 and he's still trading. And, uh, you know, this is this is important to me. So 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I'll continue on with my story of how I wrote the book Astral Cycles with the help of Dr. Ruth Miller. So what I did was I had all this stuff lined up, and I had it in, you know, segments. And so it was Christmas time, and we were getting ready. It was after Christmas. They were getting ready for the New Year's party at San Luis Obispo College, uh, Cal Poly up there. And uh, one of the professors there, Pam Orth, uh, she was in charge of the journalism department. And uh, she was looking for a project to uh, do a book. And uh, she came over to the house uh, one afternoon, uh, right before New Year's Eve, and uh, she saw all this stuff. And she said, oh, please let us do this at, as a class project. And I says, what do you mean? She says, you just, just let me take it. And she said, I'll turn it into a book. She says, we'll do the graphics, everything. She said, and not only that, she said, it's a grant. She said, the, the government pays for it. All you have to do is fi do the $50 filing fee. And she said, the, the university will pay for that. And I said, okay, take it away. And after about about six weeks, uh, must have been right around February 2nd, so, uh, right around early February. Here came this, uh, in, she brought it back to me, and it was, my gosh, I was I was shocked how, nice, how, how neat it looked. So I called Dr. Ruth, and I said, well, you know, I'll send you a copy. And she said, you have to send Dr. or Commander David Williams. He wrote a really good book about uh, commodity, uh, astro cycles and stuff in, in the markets, uh, back in the early 60s, and he's living in Scottsdale, Arizona, and uh, you ought to let him take a look at it. Well, he was the dean of the, you know, the financial astrologers, and so I sent the book to him. He didn't know who I was. I made an introduction uh, through Dr. Miller, and uh, he called me about a week later, and he said, my goodness, he said, I'm going to endorse this. He said, this is really good. He said, I really like what you've done, and so I'm going to endorse this to the AAA, the American Federation of Astrologers, and they were having a meeting in uh, Las Vegas in August, and so— uh, no, uh, yeah, it was August of uh, 1988, and uh, the book the book came out. Uh, well, the book came out in March or February. No, it came out. No, it's in March. It came out in March of 88. In August of 88, they had a meeting down there. I I think I mentioned the story about I was going to 
I didn't know what to do as far as market it. So I went down to San Diego to visit uh, Larry Williams. And Larry looked at it and he said, Larry, he said, I can't uh, do this with you. And I said, why is that? And he said, oh, this is too good. He said, I'd be stealing money from you. And I said, Larry, I said, I don't know what the heck to do. And he said, Larry, all you got to do is, you know, send out a flyer. And I said, who do I send it to? And he reached in and gave me 3,000 names. And he said, these people have subscribed to esoteric stuff with me over the years. You know, maybe, you know, you'll like that. And, you know, maybe that the list should be pretty good. And so I had had them hand handwritten uh, uh, flyers. Uh, we went over to the handicap section there of San Luis Obispo there at the government to get the folks to do some work for us. And they were happy to do that. And so they hand wrote all the ads and everything. So I sent out 3,000 flyers. And then on the um, that first uh, Saturday, uh, the flyers went on on Thursday, and on Saturday morning, I had my phone number there. I was selling the book for $89, and uh, I got my first call at, uh, oh, it must have been 5 in the morning. It was Irving Feldman from New York City. He was a internal medicine specialist, and uh, he said, I'd like to buy the book. And uh, I said, uh, okay, and I told him where to send the check, and he laughed. He said, what do you mean send a check? He said, you have to have credit cards. He says, people are not going to send you a check. They say they will, but when they hang up, they won't write the check. And I said, I don't have credit cards. And he said, you've got to get credit cards. I said, well, let me get back to you. So it was early in the morning at 6 o'clock. I called Michael Weintraub. He was uh, one of my very good friends up there. And uh, his father had owned a... Uh, a big furrier and jewelry shop in Santa Barbara had retired, and Michael said he still had all the credit cards. And so we called we called Milton real early, and he said, "Oh yeah," he said, "you could you could use my cards." He said, "Not a problem." He said, "You're not going to sell very many, so there's no problem." And so I had all the cards set up, and it was really amazing. I ran it through uh, 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 Mr. Milton's furs out of <laughs> Santa Barbara, California, and uh, the. Uh, Next thing, I called Irving, and I told him what it was, and he said, well, how much is the newsletter? I said, I don't have a newsletter. And I, he said, do you have a hotline? I said, I don't have a hotline. He said, you got to have all those things. He said, let's, let's package it up. He said, let's do a newsletter, a hotline, and a uh, – you know, uh, uh, the book, and let's package it up. So we added up 89, 144, and we came out to 233, and it ended up to be $377. I was I was billing instead of $89. I said, I'm afraid I'm not going to sell. He says, try it. He said, you know, they have three choices. They can pick anything they want. Okay, so I did that, and by golly, I tell you folks, I couldn't, you couldn't believe what happened. It was, uh, it was amazing. That weekend, I sold uh, twenty thousand uh, dollars worth of books uh, between Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and uh, it was uh, it was really it turned out to be a, a, a really good deal. So that's uh, that's basically you know how it happened. Well, then what? By then, I was getting a little bit of press, and I got on to, to uh, TFNN, or excuse me, <laughs> it was uh, what was it called? FNN in in Los Angeles with Bill Griffith and Ron Insana. And, uh, uh, oh, my gosh. Anyway, what I did was I uh, had been friends with them during the years I had been at Drexel. And so they had me on as a guest, and, uh, you know, it turned out to be pretty good. I'd been on the show during the 70s, and during 1986 and 87. I had a few guest ex uh, uh, appearances and stuff. But then in 19, in, the, in an 88, in the uh, American Astrology meeting in 88, I was uh, featured as one of the speakers. And believe me, those people are different than me. I mean, I, these guys are really, uh, really into the astrology stuff, and I wasn't. So I had to give this one-hour talk, and I did. It went really well. And so I had books to sell, and uh, I had sold, uh, oh, probably uh, at 89 bucks a piece, I probably sold oh, 40 or 50 books the first day just standing in the hallway there. And uh, the next morning, I got up real early. I had to make some copies, so I went down to the copy room there at the Hilton Hotel, and there was a lady there, and she was running off 10 copies of my book. And uh, I looked and I said, gee, I said, that's really interesting. I said, what's it about? And she said, oh, it's a book about astrology. It's the hottest thing here at the thing. And I said, wow. I said, uh, are you running off a copy? I said, how about running up, running off a copy for me? She said, well, she said they cost $89. And she said, uh, we're, we're just selling them for $20 because, you know, we, we can't afford the 89. And I said, oh, I understand. And I said, how about if I signed the book? Would they be would they be more valuable? And she looked at me and she said, oh, please don't tell me you're him. And I said, yeah, it's me. And I said, you know, you really shouldn't do that. And I said, I wouldn't do it if it was your book.
And she says, yeah, I know. I says, what What should I do now? I said, well, finish up the tan and don't do it anymore. And <laughs> that's what I said. What am I supposed to say? I didn't do it. Anyway, I was out there, and they had a book signing thing, and I'm signing books. I'm going to get a little choked up here. There was a lady in line getting ready to buy it. It was Dr. Miller. Time for a break. I still get choked up about it. Whew. Take a little break here. Anyway, it was very, very exciting to see her there. She just told me how proud she was. And I, I said, you wouldn't even let me put your name on the book. She said, well, you know, it's your work. You're going to be the teacher of this stuff eventually. Probably never should have done this. Okay, let's take a little break. What we need to do is talk about the markets. Let's talk about the British pound. That's what we need to do. Look at the British pound here, folks. 129.40 looks like a really good spot to take a look at it. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, I posted a chart from the book Astro Cycles, A Trader's Viewpoint. On page 134, it was the uh, harmonic convergence thing in the stock market, August 25th, uh, 1987. And that's also the day that uh, George Lindsay uh, the passed away, Three Peaks in a Domed House. And uh, that, that was a major uh, conjunction, and that's similar to what we have right now. We had five major conjunctions then. We have five major conjunctions now. And uh, I don't know if it's going to mean the same thing or not. But it was very important because, you see, after this market, uh, this came after the book came out and stuff, Bill Griffith uh, had me on his show down at FNN several times. And I had we had this market showing this and stuff. And we had him. Uh, it was like I was about, about every three weeks I was uh, on the show. And always a lot of fun, about 10-minute segment. And being on TV, you know, it was really quite fun especially for my kids, which are, they were in college now. It was uh, really quite nice. But anyway, uh, after that top was in, uh, I was on Bill's show one day, and I believe, uh, I think Arch was on either with me or the day after or something like that. And I, uh, I said the stock market sometime in October will be down more than 300 points. Well, that, that was really quite a bit because we're, we were trading in like 2,700. So 300 points, that's a huge drop. That's more than 10%. I said it would be down more than 300 points in one day. The way I figured that out was the biggest drop we had had in that whole market for the last couple of years had only been 190 points in one day. You can see it on the far left down there if you look really closely. But uh, I didn't, didn't put that out. But all I did was I multiplied that times 1.618 to come up with, uh, you know, around 300 points. And it ended up being, you know, 500 and some points. But look at this chart here, folks. We were at 2750. Do you realize the low in October of that year was at 1660? That's how much that thing had dropped into October, which actually had to be a 61% retracement, 0.001% of the low from August 82. August 9th, 1982, you can check it out yourself. If you defy human nature, that's what it did. It went to that exact price, exactly 618 from 1982. And from there, it is still going at 29,000. So that's uh, that's what we're looking at. The problem with this, folks, is the astrology is a little esoteric. And what happens is it makes it difficult for some people to grasp it because they don't think that it is going to uh, mean very much. So, And, and they, they might be right. You don't really need that at all. All you have to do is to be able to just actually, you know, try to uh, – you know, find something that uh, that works where you don't have to risk very much because that's what these patterns are doing for you, folks. They're not trying to predict anything. They're just trying to tell you whether, you know, you know where you're right or wrong and what your risk is because you don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Let's switch gears here to the corn market just a little bit. Uh, this is a chart from our good friend uh, Rich Anderson, one of the services that he has. And uh, he asked me to put this out today because there's a really good uh, chance here that we could be entering a really strong phase in the uh, corn market. If you notice here, the low that we had here at 376, that was the report day. If you recall, that was last Friday. We said, you know, try to buy a break. The low of that corn, believe it or not, was exactly 0.786. And uh, it's had a heck of a rally, 11, 12 cents. But if you get a little bit of pullback here uh, in the corn, you might want to uh, uh, take, a, uh, take a look at it. Uh, that was another thing that Ruth helped me with. It was uh, She had a corn trading system that uh, was re really quite good, and it worked for like two years. It was basically based on uh, when the moon was squared Uranus. Uh, it was uh, really a good cycle time to buy it, and all I did was line up the ratios. And during that period of time, I believe it was 1988-89, every time corn would retrace, it would be exactly 707, the reciprocal of uh, you know, the square root of 2, which is 1.414, and all the expansions— Instead of them being 1.27, we're 1.414. So that was the harmonic structure that was going on in corn for several years. And then all of a sudden, you know, it started to go up and up and expanded and it contracted and changed as, as it does because the markets do change. But they change in the relationships of the ratios. And that's what uh, that's what's so exciting about these things. So well, now we're looking at the. Uh, Taking a look here, uh, see, uh, Dudette is looking for 100,000 in the Dow. It seems seems fair. It should be easily be good, you know. Uh, this is uh, 
the the uh, she's asking the question of the 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 do the patterns work within 24 hours uh, usually you have to give one day on either side that's that's three days and so that's not uh, you know that's that's not a big deal but look look at if you let me post this again here and I'll just show you what happened and uh, this was the one that was in 1987 we had a several we had several day windows this one happened to hit on the exact day which was August 25th we had a new moon uh, on the equator you know this one we had on the 10th is when we had the new moon but we made a higher high last night Last night was the 13th. That was the last two conjunction of the five planet group. The first ones came in on the uh, 13th, on the, uh, the 10th at the uh, lunar eclipse. Excuse, yeah, the lunar eclipse and full moon. Then we had three of them on Sunday. We had two of them yesterday, and uh, that's when it. Uh, that's what happened uh, so far. So there's no more. It either works. If we're up tomorrow, it's uh, it's time to. Uh, you know, to just get back to your 200-day moving average, but 100,000 looks like a really good, uh, really good target in the Dow Jones, and we or in the S&P could certainly do that. So that's what we're paying attention to here this morning. Let's move on here. I wanted to cover one other one. Uh, uh, let's get that. Where is that chart? Shut the front door and raise the rent. Oh, I know what it is. Here it is. This is the. Uh, this is the DAC so far this morning. We had a, uh, this is the, uh, hold on, let me get this up here so you'll be able to see it. There we go. There we go. Okay. You notice we had a nice ABCD pattern here in the DAX. It was a really nice three drive to a bottom pattern. The market popped up and, uh, you know, rallied up and then, you know, sold off. All it did was rally back to a 61% retracement of the high and 78% retracement of point C. And uh, just taking a look at what our friend Tom Hugard was doing, he was watching this. Uh, he doesn't use Fibonacci the, the way we do, but uh, you'll notice that what he was doing here was watching to see uh, this band of support. You know that you see where these lows were at one time and then they snap below it and then pop back up. They come right back to it and that's exactly what happened to it. It came right back and pulled down. If you did the Fibonacci retracements, you'll see that yellow bar, the last low, 61% retracement off the low. So at that point, it is quantifying what your risk is. So there you don't have to worry. You can you can just, you just put your stop in and say, how much do you want to risk? You know, you figure your risk is somewhere between $300 and $500 on most of these things. And that's uh, pretty much uh, what you're watching. So I hope that uh, hope that's a little bit helpful as we walk through these things. So let's take a look here to see what's going on here. And uh, well, there we go. Shut the front door and raise a rent. It's Christmas Day on the old Pueblo. Hold on here a second, folks. I want to uh, take a little break here, and then I want to just run through something, and we'll take a quick look at what we're watching here this morning. So bear with me here. Uh, this was one that actually did uh, actually hanging in there. Okay, hold on a second, folks. Uh, I'll be right back. 877-927-6648. the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. And I would like to take a few minutes here to uh, look at some of these currencies because they're very, very important here. Uh, this first one we're going to look at here is the euro. Let's get this up here so the folks can take a quick look at it. There we go. You'll notice here, folks, that we've been down for eight days. We stopped at the 50% retracement last night. What we did is we rallied up to that 112 level, and uh, really it that's really a very, very, a very small rally. Now we're backing backing off a little bit. The lows that we made here at 111.30 are very, very important because if we go back below that after the high we made yesterday, which happened to be a 382 retracement of the high from Christmas, uh, yeah, from uh, New Year's Eve, that's a uh, very, very strong uh, indication that the euro is going to be heading uh, lower and not higher. And if you'll remember, we, we did talk about the dollar index because it was also at that very, very critical level of 0.382. And as you can see here, if we can get the dollar index above 97.40, we've got a really good chance for a move higher. And many of these currencies have hit major pattern completions here over the uh, weekend. Uh, and this is the new, the new part of the year. You'll notice that we posted this one last week when we were making the big ABCD pattern here in the Australian dollar. You know, we had a little bit of a stop at the 618. We bounced up, and now we're, we're hanging around that uh, 6890 level, I believe, this morning. So it's trying to hold up also. But this is uh, the key to watch is that 9750 level in the U.S. dollar. If we get above that, it's going to have a pretty good run to the upside, and that means the euro is going to go below the 111 area, and then it could also. Remember that euro, folks, if you look at that chart again very closely, that is nothing more than an ABCD rally that took place over two months, stopped exactly at a 61% retracement and a 78% retracement of those levels, and then down. I hope that helps. I, if you have any questions, it's 877 927 Six six four eight, and I know you folks. Uh, some of you folks get really bored at looking at numbers and patterns, but that's what I look at. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, you know, the, the the guests that we have on here, you know, have some really great ideas, and that's what they're used for is ideas. You're the one that has to take responsibility for your trades, and as long as you do that. You know, you should be okay. So just remember, it's all about taking responsibility and losing less than the other person. 
because the people that are really successful at these darn things, they take losses a lot faster than you do. That's the main thing. Let's take a quick review here of some of the things from uh, the floor trader. We're going to be issuing here in the next, uh, oh, the next four or five months, I'm going to have a little floor traders manual about how to look down, you know, look at some of these numbers and what floor traders did. Uh, and they're still floor traders. They're just sitting at home now, like I am right now. They're still doing the same thing and looking at the numbers of, you know, what they're trying to look at, these uh, numbers. They're, uh, it was very important. The fact is, it's funny story about those numbers. I was at the Merck visiting back in, oh, it must have been 90, oh, 98, I think it was. And uh, the guy was, there was a guy, These they have these little tout sheets that they give to all the floor traders to have all these buy support numbers and uh, key numbers and stuff. And these these guys were on this elevator and they were trying to sell these these things for like 10 bucks. And uh, one of the one of the members was next to me, and and he he said to the kid, he said, "Why don't you check with him?" He said, "He's the one that developed the numbers, and all they were doing were looking at Fibonacci expansion and contraction numbers, and uh, so it was really quite funny." The guy had read some of the stuff that I had done, and he he was uh, he, he was surprised that I was in Chicago. Anyway, let's just uh, remember you got to trade within your comfort level, folks. That's very very important. If you do that, you know you've got you've got a big advantage, and you get, you've got to work on the nine inch cycle. That's the most important cycle, more important than anything we ever do astrologically is the nine inch cycle. That's from your left ear to your right ear. If you get that done, then you've got a pretty good chance of succeeding. And that's the real thing. Uh, one of the difficult things that I have is reversing a position. In other words, if I think that I'm going to be, uh, you know, long and all of a sudden it, it goes the other way, I don't reverse very well. Mark Douglas worked with me for weeks and weeks trying to get me to do it. And he finally threw up his hands and he said, hey, you do OK, so don't don't worry about reversing. But boy, I mean, some of those reversal trades were were absolute monsters. That was the real key to uh, that you look at. It's it's very, very important to, to keep these uh, things going. And the main thing is, is uh, another another thing that's that's really, uh, if you have three losses in a day, hey, it's not your day. So I, if you have three losses in a row, I, I you should just quit trading because, you know, maybe it's uh, the stars are not working that day or not. I don't know, but that's neither here nor there. So, you know, pay attention to that. It's uh, something that uh, should be, you know, should be looked at is what I would be thinking. So we'll, we'll pay attention to that to see if we can do it. Okay. We're, they got the Dow's only up 12 right now. And uh, we'll, well, no, it's, yeah, it's only up 12. Whether it's going to mean anything or not, I don't know. So we'll do one thing at a time and see how these things uh, end up. I appreciate you folks listening to the thing about the, about Ruth Miller. Sorry, I got a little maudlin there at the end, but uh, she was very, very important to me. Uh, just as, uh, just, just, just can't believe how, how wonderful she really was. It was really great. Anyway, let's move on here and talk a little bit about uh, Tesla. Uh, I posted the chart of Tesla. Now, uh, this is in a, uh, I think it's, in fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we have gone above the 1.618 expansion on the weekly chart. That came in at... Uh, uh, 354. I, or excuse me, 554. I don't know what the high on Tesla has been so far, but it could be 554. We'll just be able to see what's going on. Um, they're talking a little bit in the den about the trade deal, folks. I think that trade deal has been factored into the market. The only thing that would be a surprise is if the Chinese delegation walked out. And, you know, anything can happen in these things, and it usually does. So be prepared. Things, uh, you know, don't always uh, look – they're not as good as they seem or as bad as they might be or whatever that quote happens to be. I know that uh, David White has it to the tick, so if he wants to put that in there, uh, that would be great. <laughs> uh, someone's asked me what was the strangest thing uh, – oh, I don't know how to answer this. Uh, well – well, I'll just I'll think about that when someone asked me the strangest thing that ever happened to me. Uh, well, I had a bunch of strange things happen for sure. That's uh, well, no, no, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm OK. Let's move on and talk about the uh, I want to talk about the Canadian dollar here for a second, because I think that's got a, some potential here. We'll get this up here to get this up and take a look at it. You notice here that we hit some major, 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 major resistance up here at the uh, 77 level. 
And I believe that, uh, you know, if we get above the 7750 level now in the Canadian dollar, that could be a monster breakout, folks. You had two major numbers there, 61% retracement off the high in uh, March of 2018 and a 61% retracement from January 2018. And this is still a downtrend. You know, the dollar is still going, the dollar is still has strong support. Anything below 95 in the dollar, and believe me, it'll be talked about if we get anywhere close to that. Anything below 96, it'll, it'll be talked about. But that's what we're paying attention to. I think the best thing to focus on, folks, is to watch that corn market. That's the one that looks really interesting. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, let's uh, hold on just a second. I have to do a little bit of homework here, and uh, then I'll be back with you. Okay, one second here. Okay. All right. Let's move on here for just a second here. Thanks for the, listening to the show today, folks. Uh, what I will do is I'll try to have uh, 
uh, Tim Bost on uh, early next week, and also we're going to have uh, Rich Anderson will be on next week, and Cy Monley is also going to uh, give us a little bit of a recap of what's going on in the grain markets uh, next week. But keep an eye on that corn market, folks. I really think it has some potential. It's really quiet in here today, but the best way to do it, it's hard to buy strength here, at least for me, but watch the corn here and see if it will uh, pop up above the uh, pull back to a uh, a 382 correction that would take you into about uh, 386. So if you could get that corn at about 386, uh, risk about a dime. I think you could get into the farming business without uh, risking an arm and a leg, and it would be uh, be pretty good. Uh, the post that I gave a little while ago about the uh, the importance of some of these uh, aspects that are happening that comes from one of the uh, old time ast uh, uh, astrologers in the same class as uh, our our good friend Arch Crawford and Tim Bost, and uh, it's it's really important that. Uh, you take a look at that because it may or may not mean anything. The fact that it happened so rare is the main thing is to keep important, keep that as a, uh, as a part going. Anyway, that's what we're, I think we're wrapping up the show here. So uh, we want to thank Tony for calling in today. That was always nice to hear someone listening. So I want you folks to live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Well, I got a couple minutes here left here for if you want to call in 877-927-6648. Looks like I'm 20 seconds too early, which is a little too rough to do, but we'll see uh, what's going on here. Okay, folks, uh, what else we got going here? I think that's about it. Uh, there we go. Uh, 